Hi, welcome to the second part of this tutorial dedicated on animating Goku from Dragon Ball Super on Anime Studio. In the previous part, we have prepared the scene and drawn the basic shapes for each visible part of the character. Now, we will rig the character and animate him already. We will start by creating a bone layer that we can name Goku, then we will select all the existing vector layers and drag them into the bone layer. Since we will have groups inside the bone layer, we will open the settings of Goku's bone layer and go to the bone tab. There, we will make sure that the checkbox Allow Nested Layer Control is properly checked. Then, we can start creating the bones. Chest, neck, shoulders, arms and head. For now, Every single bone is influencing all the layers, so moving any of them will deform the character. This is where comes rigging. Let's just reorganize the sub-layers a little bit before starting rigging them. Ear and head are elements that don't need to bend, so of course we will use the point binding here. Select the ear layer, Select the bone you want to bind by pressing B on your keyboard. Then select all vectors, type I on your keyboard and click on the button Bind Points. You can also choose to directly bind the layer. The result is the same. Since the shape that we have there will bend according to the head and chest movement, we should better use the flex binding technique. In order to achieve it, go to the next layer Press B on your keyboard, then hold Shift and click on the bones you want to influence this layer. Here it will be the head bone, the neck bone and the chest bone. Finally go to Bone in the top menu and click on Use Selected Bones for Flexi Binding. This can also be done by using the shortcut Shift Command F. So now all the other bone colors have changed. This shows you that only the three bones that we selected are influencing the neck layer. We will repeat the same logic for the rest of the character. Left arm will be influenced by the shoulder plus arm bones. For the right arm, since we separated upper arm and lower arm in two different layers, we will use point binding for each of them. You can see that we also have a layer for the hand. This layer can be bound to the forearm bone. Since I don't want the whole body to move when I will animate the chest bone, I will add an additional bone that will be the body controller. In order to do that, just create a new bone, decrease the influence to zero and make it the parent of the chest bone. After making sure that you're happy with the basic rigging, we can move on starting the animation. Let's start by adding markers on the timeline. They are going to be very useful as we'll use them as checkpoints for the different movements. They will also be very useful when we will move to the point animation later. Let's add the first marker at frame 48. This will be the body movement that will mark the transition between the first screen capture and the second one. Let's plan to make him talk. He will start talking very early in the animation. Let's plan an eye blink also. We will create another image layer in which we will add the second screen capture that we took. We will set the same settings as the first one. Opacity 30 and don't render this layer. We will then group both of them in a switch layer. Now we will go on the timeline on the not keyframe and right-click on the switch layer to switch to Screen Capture 2. You can consider markers and Screen Cap switch layer as our storyboard. I will also add a camera movement at the beginning to make the scene more dynamic. So the character will be off-screen first. Then the camera will pan down on him and he will talk, 
blink and finally nod his head. Now we can start moving our character to follow these guidelines. Go to frame 1, select all the bones and create a rotation keyframe by pressing T and then clicking on the screen. Go to keyframe 30 and copy paste the rotation keyframes created on frame 1. I chose to proceed like that because I will surely add some other small movements in between. Then you go on frame 48 and you can move the bones to match the screen capture number 2. It's okay if the character doesn't exactly match it. We will refine the animation later. For now, we only need the basic movements. Only by rotating the bones, you will try to match the position he has on screen cap number 2. I choose to move also the layer on the Z-axis during the nod movement to give the illusion of a body movement and also to match better with the reference. Then we check how the main movement looks like. Let's move on with the camera animation. Just go on the keyframe 1 Press 4 on the numpad to select camera tool. Then move the camera up by holding shift and dragging the character down. Then go on the next marker and copy paste the camera keyframe 0. Now you have your camera movement. After rechecking the whole animation, it looks like the head movement is a bit too slow for me. I will just select all the keyframes on the nod marker and drag them to the left in order to accelerate the head movement. After doing such change, you will have to adjust other keyframes like the layer movement and also the switch layer. This is why it's very important to have your major movements done before going into animation details. Now that the head movement is faster, I will move on adding bones for the hair. I'd like to add hair movements as it gives more credibility and depth to the animation. For the short strands, one bone will be enough, but for the long ones, we will use two bones. We will make sure that they are properly parented with the head bone. We will try to properly position them because all of them will be influencing the same layer. So we need to make sure that they are only influencing the strands they have been created for. When they are all in place, we will go to the main layer. We hold shift and click on all the hair bones. Then we type shift command F to apply a flexi binding. Once it's done, we will go back to the bone layer in order to reduce the influence of these bones. Now that the influence has been reduced, we will test again the hair rigging and we can see that it looks pretty much better. Here we can see that manipulating that bone is not bending the strand. This is very normal because the shape is very basic and is missing some points allowing it to bend. Just adding one vector point will fix that. We can already do some refining on the hair bones influence. To allow a softer hair bending, I will just add some vector points in each of the hair strands. So now, when I'm manipulating the bones, the hair strands are curving accordingly. Let's move on animating them. On our timeline, the hair movement will happen when Goku will nod his head. This head movement being pretty fast, it will induce a resilience effect to the hair. You can set this up in the bone setting with the bone dynamics tool, but I personally prefer to do it manually. Let's go to the nod movement that we created. We will start by adding keyframes at the beginning and at the end of the hair movement animation. To do that, select all the hair bones 
and copy paste the keyframe 0 into a keyframe located after the beginning of the head movement. And copy paste it again on a keyframe located after the end of the head movement. Since the hair movement is only a reaction to the head movement, this hair animation will occur after the head movement. And since the hair movement is supposed to be only a resilience effect, the hair have to come back in their original position when the character is not moving. Now we go between the new keyframes and start animating the hair. Whenever I'm animating hair, I'm applying a very weird and singular technique. I mimic the head movement with my own hand and see how the fingers are reacting. Then I reproduce a similar movement to the bones that I'm animating. But basically, when the head goes down, the hair will slightly move up. Regarding the hair strands that have two bones influencing them, I recommend animating the base first as this part is only slightly moving. The main movement will be on the tip, which is physically less massive and has an ampler movement. Here you can see that the hair on the left side don't have a natural movement. To fix this, we will just readjust the rotation. Once we are done animating the hair, we will just save the project. 